Well, I ain't much to believe in a ghouls and ghosts and goblins and all that, but uh, I'll tell you one night I got pretty scared. And that was the night I had to sit up with my dead uncle. It was uh, not a good experience. Now, it was Uncle Lou. He was mommy's brother-in-law. Now, I didn't know him. They lived across the state. But when he passed away, they had us go and want to mourn with them and they had us sitting up with them, sitting up with them, and I got chose. And I tell you what, I guess where I was the oldest boy, I had to do the duties. And I tell you one thing, it was not something I want to do again. So if you don't know about sitting up with the dead, they used to have funerals and wakes and all that. They was done it at your house. They didn't go to no funeral homes or any of that. They had your body laid out and had you in your coffin and so somebody would sit up with the dead just to make sure nothing, nothing happened. So I was in there and all the rest of them was down the hall or up the stairs sleeping. And, uh, so I was in there trying to be quiet. I mean to tell you. There's a quiet, and then there's another kind of quiet that where you get to jump in, you hear started hearing things, and and that's kind of where I was at, because I was only about 11 or 12 year old. And it seemed like every few minutes I'd hear a bump or a thump somewhere, and so I'd hit to send a shiver down my spine. I did not get a wink of sleep at night tell you one thing now I've heard stories and heard tales of them bodies would every now and then rise up in them coffins and uh, just some kind of some kind of action that take place in their body and they just sit up I mean they're still just as dead as could be but it sit up and, buddy, you talk about, I, I don't know what, I don't know what I would have done if that would have happened, but I still kept a hearing noises and it seemed like these are coming from his direction half the time and Lord, it was, uh, that's the longest night of my life. <laughs> I'll tell you what, now. Like I say, I don't believe in ghosts, but I don't go trifling with it either. And he was known to have lived a pretty rough life, so if somebody's going to come back and haunt you, it, it might would have been a man like that. Uh, he's pretty rough on my ain't from what I've heard. And he drank pretty heavy, so he wasn't a... He would have had a restless spirit, is what we would have said. And I don't know if he was a praying man. I'd never heard that he was. So you put all that together and you got a kind of a recipe for a long night, let's just say. So I was sitting there and they had an old 
cat that stayed outside. He was an old barn cat. And Buddy, he went to Howlin'. And I tell you what, I about messed in my britches. <laughs> I was, it was way deep in the night. And I was, I never, I don't reckon I went to sleep the whole night. If I did, I don't remember it. But I tell you what, I sure woke up when I heard him squalling out there. I don't know if he got in a fight with another cat or something else or what happened. I never did know, but Buddy, when he went to yell, meowing and yelping, and uh, about uh, my blood pressure went through the roof. <laughs> my heart was just a pounding in my chest. And, but Buddy, I looked over and there wasn't no movement in the coffin, thankfully, but i tell you what, there's things like that that people had to do. But Lord, I don't know how, what people would do these days. I don't know that they could do it. But back then, you just did what you had to do, and sitting up with the dead was a part of it. And i tell you what, like I say, they just, every little noise would set you off, especially when I was just a young boy. I, just at that age where I had a real good imagination, so I imagined a lot of scary things, and I don't. Thankfully, I never had to do that job again. But I know you tell you what, I wish I never had to do it in the first place. <laughs> I don't wish that off on nobody.